Welcome back to Psycho Macabre. Today on the show, we're going to be talking about blood. So stay tuned. Yeah, we don't want to do anything to scare your children. That's the last thing we want to do. We don't want to scare anybody. Last Kenny 911, what is your Thank you. Caller, what's the address? I'm Shannon. I'm a true crime and horror author. I also have an associate's degree in psychology and sociology a bachelor's degree in psychology with a criminal justice certificate, and I'm currently working on my master's in clinical counseling or counseling psychology. Part of my criminal justice certificate, which it was my minor, was criminal justice during my undergrad, we studied forensics. So we got to do a lot of things with crime scenes and blood and DNA and stuff like that. I took forensics my third year of college, so it would have been my junior year first year of my bachelor's because since I did go through a community college for my associates and then I went to a private university for my bachelor's. Um, I did two years at both locations before I began work on my master's degree. So I haven't actually looked much at forensics since my junior year. So it's been about three years now. Uh, so for this, I'm going to be utilizing the forensic science fifth edition textbook and introduction to scientific and investigative techniques by Susan Bell. And today we are going to be talking about blood. Um, I've been, I've always been fascinated with crime scenes, obviously, since I'm a true crime author. Uh, and if you've seen any of the podcasts here on the channel, we've talked a lot about crime scenes and serial killers and stuff like that on here. So forensic science is very important in tracking down suspects. Um, specifically blood. Uh, blood is a very, very important part of the crime scene because it can tell you which direction uh, the blood came from. It can help you understand where the victim and the perpetrator were at the scene when the crime took place and so many other things. So first, blood is separated into two different uh, aspects. You have the plasma, which is the fluid. And then you have the blood cells or platelets. First is the red blood cell. This helps get oxygen through the system uh, via the arteries and then carbon dioxide through the system via the veins. And then you have the white blood cells, which are the antibodies of the system. They help prevent bacteria and viral infections and stuff like that. Uh, and then there's the platelets are the major components of cl uh, for clotting mechanism of the blood. In normal individual cellular components comprise approximately 45% of the total blood vo volume, which ranges in healthy adults from 4.5 to 6.0 liters, uh, about 1.2 to 1.6 gallons. A person who loses significant amounts of blood can die by bleeding to death or exsanguination. Um, something interesting about blood, it is, to my knowledge, the only fluid that retains its shape when it drops it doesn't when it drops from straight above it doesn't splatter out it remains round as you can see in this picture here um, this is very interesting um, but if you if it comes at an angle the actual spatter itself the trail can show you the angle it came at with a lot of substances this it splatters outward so if you were to throw a uh, water balloon, that water is gonna splatter away from where the balloon came from. With blood, however, it doesn't spatter out. It leaves a trail. So, for instance, in this picture here, the trail shows that the blood came from that direction. This is how in um, crime scenes or like in episodes of Dexter where you see the blood map, uh, the, um, the yarn or string uh, running from blood, from blood patterns back to a specific point. That's how they can tell uh, which direction the impact came from is 
by via directionality. Here it says the narrow end of the elongated blood stain usually points in the direction of travel. After this, directionality of several blood stains has been determined. An area of coverage may be established by drawing straight lines through the long axis of the blood stains. The, aware, the area where the, these lines coverage represents the relative location of the blood source in a two-dimensional perspective. Uh, this area of convergence will be an area not an exact point. An analogous operation allows for determining the area of origin, which is in three dimensions. If the angle of impact is 90%, the resulting blood stain generally, or 90 degrees, resulting blood stain generally will be circular in shape, as in figure 4.4, blood drops that strike a target at an angle less than 90 degrees will create elliptical blood stains. So, <clears throat> as you can see here, the top one is 90 degrees from straight above, and then from less than 90 degrees, elliptical blood stains. Yeah, and here are some images of blood droplets here and how the impact occurs. So here in this figure, we can tell that the blood dropped from that direction. This would be about right here. And then this one would be here. Straight above, the drop is completely round, no actual spatter pattern. So can you tell me in this picture here, which direction did the blood come from? I'll give you a moment. This blood would actually come from below. So the person was on the ground and probably getting struck by a very hard object. And that's how that happened. When the center of a dried blood stain flakes away and leaves a visible outer rim, the result is referred to as a skeletonized stain. Uh, so like this picture here, see the rim, the ring around the blood stain. That's the skeletonized stain. And then above that is the wipe pattern. So the blood would have been wiped this way. That's the direction in which the suspect was moving, uh, at least moving their hand. Um, as you can see, here's the main source of the blood. And then it wiped this way. Uh, spatter and cast off patterns are created with subsequent blows to the same general area where a wound has occurred and blood has accumulated. So again, that image I showed you earlier, right here, as I said, the individual was laying on the ground and was continuously hit with, an, with a hard object, uh, probably a hammer or block or something like that. Um, that's how it cast off patterns. When a bullet enters the body at a high velocity, two spatter, and pro spatter processes can occur. Back spatter and forward spatter. The back spatter is where the object entered. Um, so say an individual is shot. Okay, Their back is against the wall. The um, the bullet is coming from this direction. Okay, uh, say the end of, uh, the perpetrator is standing very close to them, uh, so point blank range. The back spatter is going to get onto the individual uh, from the entry wound, and then the forward spatter is going to come out in the direction of travel of the bullet. So the forward spatter is going to go all over the wall. Uh, and then you have misting. Any surface close to the impact site will be spattered with fine droplets that are sometimes referred to as misting. And then we have uh, parent stains, satellite spatter, and drip patterns. Uh, single drops of blood will produce small patterns around the parent stain uh, because of striking a rough target surface. Spatter produced in this manner is referred to satellite spatter or satellite stains. 
When multiple free-falling drops of blood are produced from a stationary source onto a horizontal surface, drip patterns will result from blood drops falling into previously deposited wet blood stains or small pools of blood. So, for instance, here. Um, the crown-like pattern around the edge of each drop is referred to as scalloping. Let me see if I can find a good example of that. It's almost... It's almost like around the very edge of each droplet is the scalloping. Um, yeah. And then um, it says here, in a living victim, this uh, accumulation of blood will be forcefully expelled from the nose or mouth to free the airwaves. This type of blood stain is referred to as expirated blood stain pattern. An example of that would be this one right here. Uh, so that's really all I can talk about about blood in this video. Um, if you like these kind of videos, uh, providing you a little bit more information about crime scenes and stuff, um, let me know. Uh, comment, leave a like. Um, like I said, it's been about three years since I took this class. Uh, and I haven't really done much with my criminal justice certificate, uh, my criminal justice education thus far, um, because I am studying to become a clinical counselor. Uh, so that's why I did have to refer back to the book quite a bit. Um, it's not that the information isn't there. It's just that I wanted to ensure that the information I was producing to you was accurate. Um, so yeah, I did ace this class. Um, it was a very fun class. Uh, for our final exam, we got to investigate a crime scene. It, it was done with dolls and fake blood and stuff like that. Uh, probably pig's blood. Um, and so we got to investigate this crime scene and describe what happened um, according to what the evidence showed. Um, I aced the final exam and it, it was it was really fun. Uh, they allowed us to take pictures, um, video and everything, and then uh, enter in our um, analysis online. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend if you get the chance you take a forensics class in college. Uh, however, the college I went to, uh, forensics was, wasn't a class that just anybody could take. Uh, it wasn't like a, a, a general elective. You had to be in the criminal justice program in order to take forensics. And that's why I chose to minor in criminal justice. Uh, otherwise I would have just went straight with psychology and then chose some uh, electives that way. Uh, however, I did end up minoring and then I switched it to a certificate program so that I didn't have to do the practicum for it, um, which would have required me uh, interning at a police station, going on ride-alongs and stuff like that. And I just didn't have the time for that. Um, so that's the only reason it didn't turn into an official minor and why it was a certificate instead. And the certificate I received from that is, where'd it go? It's right there on the shelf next to the skull. Um, that's the criminal justice certificate. Uh, I studied at Millican University in Decatur, Illinois. Um, I received my associate's degree in psychology and sociology. I say that because uh, I took the same amount of classes for psychology as sociology. Uh, 
but I earned that from Richland Community College in Decatur, Illinois. Uh, I earned my bachelor's degree in psychology and my criminal justice certificate from Millican University in Decatur, Illinois. And I'm currently enrolled in the clinical counseling master's program at Northwestern University, um, which is an online program. So I can do it from home. I don't have to travel all the way up to Evanston to do that. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think and uh, take care.